There are different schools of thought in natural medicine on this one. The first is that most of the childhood diseases against which we vaccinate are mild and leave no lasting damage. Although they are unpleasant for the child and worrisome for the parents, provided the child is kept warm, well hydrated, given nutritious foods and allowed to rest, most recover remarkably quickly. For example, the official US Centers for Disease Control figures relating to the whooping cough outbreak of 1992-94 indicate a 99.8% recovery rate. As stated earlier in this series, the received wisdom in natural medicine is that strong systems react strongly and weak systems react weakly. So the overt illness of a child is actually a good sign, indicating a strong vital force most of the time. Natural exposure also imparts lifelong immunity to the particular disease which vaccination does not. With natural immunity, only 3 to 7% of the antibodies are thought to be committed, compared with up to 70% with vaccination. In fact, when I was a child, parents used to actually send their children round to a neighbour's house upon hearing of a case of measles or other disease so that they could deliberately become infected in childhood and develop lasting immunity. This natural exposure provided protection against infection in adulthood when these diseases can prove much more dangerous. For example, death from chickenpox in an adult is 20 times more likely than in a child. Natural exposure also provides the benefits of an immune system which has been strengthened by the natural disease process. If you subscribe to Pasteur's germ theory, then the immune system has to work to develop Otherwise, it's a little like doing everything for a child who then never matures. So it is, in essence, being cruel to be kind. If any immunity is imparted by vaccination at all, then it may be in the range of up to six to ten years. And booster shots may be effective for as little as six months, if at all. This is a problem because vaccination may prevent infection in childhood, postponing it until later in life when it proves more damaging. In fact, about half of the measles cases in the late 1980s occurred in teenagers and adults, most of whom had been vaccinated as children. This meant either that the vaccine had never provided effective protection and that those affected fell foul of the first bout to which they were exposed, or that any protection had only been temporary. The second school of thought in natural medicine is that not only are what we perceive as childhood diseases rarely harmful, but are actually beneficial and essential to healthy development. For example, people who have never had measles have a higher instance of some skin diseases, degenerative diseases of bone and cartilage, and certain tumours, while the failure to have mumps as a child has been linked to higher risks of ovarian cancer later in life. In fact, natural medicine maintains that what we call illness is the body mobilising its resources to expel toxins or microbes, resulting in a fever, rashes, a runny nose and a cough, and possibly diarrhoea. In suppressing this reaction, the body is not able to detoxify, and chronic disease is the result, as toxins are driven deeper and deeper into storage in body tissues. Anthroposophical medicine came out of the work of the visionary Dr. Rudolf Steiner and Dr. Ita Wagman. It is a holistic approach which looks not just at a particular illness, but at the mind, body and spirit of the individual and aims to promote healing through supporting their vital force. Doctors subscribing to anthroposophical medicine recommend only the tetanus and polio vaccines as they believe contracting the other childhood infectious diseases is beneficial in that it matures and strengthens the immune system. Another way of understanding childhood illnesses comes from the homeopathic concept of miasms. Homeopathy was founded by the German doctor, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, in the 18th century. He perceived that some predispositions or weaknesses he called miasms were traits that had been passed down through the generations. And that these traits were originally caused by exposure of an ancestor to the plagues and venereal diseases which afflicted many over the last few centuries. Such people survived, but not without cost. Whether this is what we would now call an epigenetic effect, or whether such diseases caused possibly multiple DNA damage that was then heritable, we still don't know. This might be what the Bible is referring to when it talks about the sins of the father being visited upon the third or fourth generation. According to the precepts of homeopathy, 
Childhood diseases are thought to be a way of the body casting off these traits early in life. And if this process is suppressed, then these individuals can go on to suffer chronic ailments in a miasm-specific way. For example, people whose parents or grandparents were exposed to tuberculosis may carry a tuberculinic miasm, and this is said to be the seat of all autoimmune disease. This miasm is considered to be activated by pharmaceutical drugs and particularly antibiotics, leading to autoimmune conditions such as lupus and myasthenia gravis. So in this view, whilst unpleasant, childhood disease is nature's way of making good past deficits and restoring each generation. Suppressing this reaction obviously has serious and potentially lifelong consequences for not only the individual involved, but their descendants. So if you take nothing else away from this vaccination myth series, understand this. Allow and support the natural processes of the body. By some estimates, our bodies constitute four quadrillion cells, all working collaboratively with the sole goal of keeping you alive. Although some of what it does is mystifying to us and hard to tolerate, it is far more intelligent and sophisticated than our fairly primitive understanding. So let yourself and your child be sick. Paradoxically, it's how you stay well. In fact, occasional fevers are thought to burn off small cancerous tumours and suppressing fevers using pharmaceutical drugs as most people have been taught to do may be one of the reasons why one in three of us can expect to get cancer. Which brings us to vaccination myth seven. My child hasn't reacted to any vaccines, so they're fine.